Happy Trooper here with another fun project. In this episode, we will 3D print, sand, and paint the Staff of Ra headpiece as seen in the film Raiders of the Lost Ark. Even if you aren't an Indiana Jones fan, this video may help you with finishing and painting 3D printed objects that require a gold finish. The goal of this project was to construct a relatively screen accurate movie prop utilizing tools and materials that can be used in a homework area. In this video, I will try four different gold finishing techniques. Brush painting with acrylics, applying a rub and buff finish, spray painting, and airbrushing. Do what you are comfortable with and what fits your budget. Here are the tools and materials that I used during this build. A 3D printer, 320 grit sandpaper, one part filler putty, 12 millimeter rhinestones, an antique bronze costume necklace, and various paints. A list of all products and materials can be found in the description below. Thanks to Young66, the Staff of Raw Headpiece STL file is available for free on Thingiverse.com. I am using a CR10S printer with Inland PLA Plus in black, printing at 210 degrees. I used Cura software to generate my G-code for printing. To capture the fine detail of this object, it was printed at a 0.12 mm layer height. Because of the beveled type on the outside of the headpiece, it is prone to ghosting. It is highly recommended to drop your print speed to about 20 to 25 mm per second. Having Z-axis support rods will also help improve the quality of the print. After printing, sand down the layer lines with some 320 grit sandpaper. If the lines are giving you trouble, drop down to 220 grit and then back to 320. Fill in any noticeable gaps with some one part filler putty and then sand it off with 320 grit sandpaper. Sanding twigs are helpful for hard to reach areas. The quickest and easiest finish can be applied with non toxic acrylic paints. This is a terrific option if you have a young Indiana Jones fan who would like to complete this project or if your work area does not allow for toxic fumes. I started off with a black base coat of Folk Art Black. I applied two coats on each side, with about 15 minutes of drying time in between coats. The paint lays down very smooth and self-leveled a bit. No thinning was needed. After the black base coat dried for about one hour, I applied three coats of Folk Art Treasure Gold with 30 minutes in between coats. This paint also required no thinning. We aren't quite done yet. Later in the video, we'll give the headpiece an acrylic clear coat and apply some weathering. I was very pleased with the results that Rub and Buff provided. It was easy to apply and yielded a very nice worn bronze appearance. In the movie, Indy does mention that it is a worthless bronze medallion. Technically, it isn't gold. After sanding, apply your choice of undercoat. You can hand brush some dark brown acrylic as a base coat, or if you would like a smoother finish, spray paint can be used. The headpiece was temporarily hot glued to a small block of wood that was used as a grip when spraying the object. A shot of compressed air and a wipe down with some rubbing alcohol removed any debris. I sprayed the medallion with two coats of filler primer. After 4 hours, I wet sanded the filler primer with 400 grit sandpaper. 320 grit can also be used.
Next, I hit the object with two coats of espresso brown in a satin finish, waiting 10 minutes between coats. I let the paint cure for over 48 hours. Next, I squeezed a pellet-sized amount of rub and buff and spread it between my thumb and index finger. The wax was then applied over the headpiece. If you apply it in thin layers, the small, hard-to-reach areas will retain the brown undercoat, simulating some weathering. The rub and buff can be gently buffed with a soft cloth, paper towel, or t-shirt to reveal a nice finish. To prepare for spray painting, the headpiece was temporarily hot glued to a small block of wood that was used as a grip when spraying the object. A shot of compressed air and a wipe down with some rubbing alcohol removed any debris. I sprayed the medallion with two coats of filler primer. After 4 hours, I wet sanded the filler primer with 400 grit sandpaper. 320 grit can also be used. Next, I hit the object with two coats of Rust-Oleum Gloss White, waiting 10 minutes between coats. I let the paint cure for over 48 hours. A white gloss was used for two reasons to provide a bright undercoat and also provide a smooth shiny surface for the next layer of paint. Two coats of Rust-Oleum metallic finish in gold were applied, 10 minutes apart from one another. After applying, refrain from touching the paint. It is extremely fragile and can leave fingerprints. Let it sit for at least two days. A clear acrylic gloss will be applied in the next step to protect the gold paint. For the airbrushed medallion, I did start off with filler primer, just like the rub and buff and spray paint versions. I'll spare you from having to watch the filler primer section again. Feel free to jump back in the video to review spraying the filler primer and wet sanding. In an attempt to give the headpiece some reflective properties, I chose to go with a gloss black undercoat. Two coats of Rust-Oleum gloss black were applied, with 10 minutes between coats. I let the black gloss cure for over 48 hours. Next. I applied some Spastix Mirror Chrome with an airbrush. I set the compressor to 17 PSI and made three passes with the chrome. After waiting for 24 hours, I gently wiped off excess particles with a microfiber cloth.
To tint the headpiece, I used a mixture of Tamiya yellow and red clear acrylics. The mixture was as follows, 2.5 milliliters of yellow, half a milliliter of red, and 6 milliliters of Tamiya acrylic thinner. Two drops of Tamiya paint retarder were also added to the mixture. Acrylic paints have a tendency to dry quickly. The paint retarder provided a slightly longer drying time, allowing the tint to go on wet, yielding a smooth and level layer of paint. I sprayed the mixture at 15 psi and needed to apply about four coats. I let the acrylic cure for 24 hours. For the hand brushed acrylic and spray paint versions of the headpiece, I applied Pledge Floor Care to give the medallion a little more shine and to give it some protection. I used a flat synthetic brush to apply the Pledge. Use a light coat. Pledge does self-level, but if it is applied heavily, drips can accumulate. After 8 hours, I applied a second coat. After giving the pledge time to cure, I mixed up some burnt umber and black watercolor paints. I added one drop of dish soap. The dish soap helps with surface tension. If it is not used, the watercolor will roll off the glossy surface. Apply the watercolor in the recessed areas and wait about 30 minutes for it to dry. Wipe off the excess watercolor with a damp paper towel, leaving the watercolor in the recessed areas. The watercolor will not affect the paint layers underneath. If any mistakes are made, just wipe it off and start over. I used E6000 to secure the 12mm red rhinestones into the eye sockets. Any adhesive can be used. Even though E6000 has a long drying time, it does not craze plastic or harm the paint. To finish things up, you can add Marion's chain. I used an antique bronze 4x6mm flat oval link necklace. To display the medallion, you can pick up a garden paver stone for under $1 at Lowe's.